Mwah. Good morning. That was dancing. You, okay, I could have done, I, they didn't ask me to dance with them, but I think I could have done a little bit better. Right, Stuart? Okay, good morning. So you guys should all have your coffee by now. Yeah? So I'm going to share with you my journey about how I came to use Orchestro for a little bit of a different uh, use case study. So at Box, we are the content management company from beginning of and creation of a document, video, MP4, any kind of content you might have, all the way through version control, signature, and repository through the entire life cycle of that document, wrapped around in security, all the alphabet soup that we um, all have to be compliant with, GDPR, um, ISO, what else, PII, what's that alphabet soup, another one? There's, I think there's new ones coming out pretty soon. But we keep your content secure. However, we didn't have visibility into our diverse supply base. And I need my clicker here. <laughs> So how many of you are practitioners out there who I call sourcing procurement practitioners? And do you all still, you all have a diverse supplier transparency reporting metric regularly program? I'm not seeing one. Thank you, sir. Very lucky. <laughs> one, very little. And so we didn't have visibility into our supplier, uh, diverse supply base in terms of metrics, or even who are we doing business with from a diverse supply base perspective. And I'm going backwards. Here we go. <laughs> and so most of us who don't have an automated system are probably collecting the supplier diversity intelligence and information manually, right? Through Excel spreadsheets. Hopefully Lotus Note 123 is not still around. Yeah? <laughs> and probably surveys. Who sends out surveys to their suppliers, asking them to send responses back? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for owning up to it. How's that working? Not very well. Didn't work well for me either. It took months just to get less than 10% of my supply base to respond back, right? So I had to find a better way. This is not new, however, I was able to ask Orchestro to help me. So in terms of just joining Box about three, a little bit over three years ago, I knew that in addition to negotiating contracts, I still have to build my function. Um, and part of that function is to have an understanding of what my supply base looks like. And I also knew, especially during COVID, how many more of you are getting asked uh, questions from your potential supplier, or that's potential suppliers, your customer base, RFP requests, right, from your sales side of what is your spend with your diverse suppliers. More and more, right? Absolutely. And so I was facing that too, but I was not about to have my CEO, COO, CSO come to ask me what's my supply base and I can't give them an answer. And so therefore, let me take us back a little bit. How far or how long ago do you all think a formal supplier diversity program was actually put in place nationally? The answer's right up there. <laughs> uh, good try, thank you. Eh. <laughs> Anyone else? Officially, we'll give it 1971. That's when Nixon officially put a OMB, and authorized grants to actually help implement the supplier diversity program across the nation. So it's been over 50 something years, right? How are we doing as a nation? Guess? Eh, do you not know? Exactly. My point, no one really knows. But we know it's important, social governance, all of that. But no one really knows, honestly, probably no one really cares because we have not been held accountable for that. In terms of nationwide, the percentage of spend across the entire country, not just California, New York, is a measly, you'd be surprised, 5.9%. How is that for a metric? Are we doing well? Could we be doing better? Yeah, I, yes, thank you, I think so. 
right? And when you break that 5.9% down, it's even sort of a worst case. Like 50 years, why haven't we done something about this? Everybody knows it's important, everybody wants to do it, but this is our results after 50 something years. And what's even sad, sadder, during COVID, I think the diverse suppliers are, were more, even more impacted. So that number, 5.9% has gone down over the last two years. Because the majority of them is in workplace services, right? Therefore, a little bit of uh, sort of my roadmap, if you will, after joining Box, all of the um, occasions that occurred, we hired a VP of social impact, ESG, and I was like, awesome, great, we do care about supplier diversity. So I was able to partner with her back in September of 2020, the VP started. Um, but during COVID, what, what happened very interestingly in July was the CEO of what was then called SurveyMonkey, they were not, they're not SurveyMonkey now, they're, they rebranded, but the CEO <laughs> emailed our CEO and said, hey, let's do something different. 50 something years of supplier diversity and we're getting measly numbers. Why haven't we improved? Because we've always approached it the same way. 50 something years. It's we measure or we identify our suppliers by the ownership of who owns, that, who owns the company. If we really wanted to have true empowerment and influence, why don't we look at then the workforce of that supplier? Really push for diversity in the leadership, in the board of directors of our critical and strategic partners. Why let the big companies like Google, Oracle, LinkedIn, Facebook get away with not having representation in their workforce, in their leadership? So we started a coalition, right? Um, along with some Bay Area smaller companies, the up and coming Slacks, Zoom, Intuit, Tender, Box, and SurveyMonkey. So we have a justice coalition now that we actually meet on a monthly basis and we share about our metrics and what we're intending to do. We share best practices of how are we doing with implementing our sub uh, diverse supplier programs. How to, get it, how to get it started? How to get it started, very first step, is you have to have transparency and data as to who you have and who you're doing business with today, right? Therefore, I went to Arkestro and said, back to Edmund's earlier comment about self-driving and automation, I cannot, I do not have months to spend to implement a program. I have to get access to my data right away. And you know what, Mr. Arkestro, Edmund, <laughs> if, you wanna, if you want me to sign up as a customer, show me that you can give me and deliver results, not in months, in weeks. I have this business problem. If you really want to become my partner, help me solve my problem with me. And oh, by the way, I want it to be automated somehow. No touch to me. They're calling me no touch Linda. <laughs> Everything I've asked them to do is, I'll give you information, I don't want to touch it. You have to come up and give me the results. And this is what I received two weeks. Within two weeks, I had access, and this is of course a little bit old information now, I can't give you my current one just yet, <laughs> but within two weeks, I had access, metrics, graphs of my diverse supply base. Now that I can just screenshot for every time my chief sales officer, my chief revenue officer, CEO, whoever, hey Linda, what's our uh, supplier diversity spend because we're doing a RFP response for so-and-so. Screen grab, done. And I don't really even have to format it into a slide. Even better. How many of you still download information, raw data, and upload it into something like a Tableau for visualization? Why? Push your suppliers, which as I pushed Orchestro, push them to have dashboards in app. Why are you making me do the work? You are, or they are, the solution providers help me solution my problem without me doing the work. Because I'm lazy that way. <laughs> right? Time to value. Show me the time to value. Two weeks time and I'm able to get 
visibility like this. This, of course, then shows me I have opportunities in the LGBTQ space, veteran-owned space, where else? Oh, and women-owned suppliers. Quickly like that at, at my fingertips. Then I said, okay, great. Thank you for this. Now let me take it another step further. What about metrics about my operations? Show me and build me a dashboard for my volumes of POs, requests, spends by category, and so on. Again, I can give you the raw data. No touch by me, show me what you can do. Again, within two weeks' time. So my partnership, or I actually see uh, Orchestro not as a supplier, but a true partnership, partner, <laughs> supplier partner, who really believed in my success as much as their success. And they took it and took this road down, down this road with me, where now any time I have a C-suite request, I can just go into the system, screenshot like that, right? Harvard Business Review, Harvard Business Review, I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> Harvard Business Review tells us the best value that procurement and sourcing can provide to the business is not savings. What is it? Data. There you go, exactly. You have to see your data. And so this was my first steps into being able, being able to provide my C-suite the visibility and the transparency at their fingertips. Our next step is to, I'm working with them to try to get even real time. Let's get to real time data. So I can actually see what's going on with the business because I own all of third party spend, whether it's direct, indirect, data centers, cloud, right? Marketing, legal, HR, everything. So I need to have my fingers and my pulse on that visibility. With that, thank you so much. Any questions? I'm around all day today and maybe sometime tomorrow, maybe first half of tomorrow, but thank you so much. I don't have a dance for them, Stuart. No, so. it's okay. <laughs> Give it up for Linda. Linda, thank you so much. I'll grab the clicker. Thank you, Linda.